So we use a series of time-lapse cameras to record the excavation as it's progressing. We have three time-lapse cameras in total, two of them in the main excavation unit and one of them over in our secondary excavation unit. These time-lapse cameras take pictures every 10 seconds, so we end up with three pictures every 10 seconds, and for the total amount of the excavation, it ends up being about 9,000 pictures per day that we end up taking here. We can use these pictures for a multitude of different things. We can set them together into time-lapse movies to actually have a movie of the excavation as it progresses. We can also use these time-lapse photos to go back and look at one specific time during the excavation to see what's actually happening at that point. So if we have questions about who is excavating what material back in the lab or when we're going through journal entries, we can go back and look at the actual excavation as it's progressing right there and get a really good record of what's happening during the excavation. This is a total station and we use it to accurately map in artifacts in the site. We line it up with a mirrored prism. Once I have it lined up with the prism, I look through the eyepiece, I focus it and I line up crosshairs with the total station and the prism. I press for it to record, it shoots the laser out, laser comes back, gives me a northing, easting and elevation of that point down to the millimeter accuracy. Once I have what I want, let's say I just mapped in some debitage, I select that code and then I press record and enter and it records the X, Y, and Z as raw data, which we then can correlate with our catalog. So all of the artifacts we find in the site in C2 have location and description data all together. Right now we're going to take and make a uh, three-dimensional representation of the artifacts and the rodent burrows in this unit. Uh, Jenny here is, has uh, Xbox Connect, and what that actually does is it will, she'll pass it over the excavation unit and it makes a three-dimensional representation of it. Then over here on the right side we just captured that, and I can actually take it and move it around in three-dimensional three-dimensional view here, we can zoom in on it, we can rotate it around, and we can see that the artifact that you found is right there. So we'll be able to zoom in on that and then place that in three-dimensional space. 16091. 16091. So now I can actually take and look up that RN number in our GIS application and then actually have it tied into this as well so then we can see with the Crotovina and everything, we can say yes, it's definitely not within any Crotovina. You can see that on the map, so it all ties together. And all these black points that you see on the screen are artifacts. And if we actually scroll in on Unit K, we can see the photo that was taken with those artifacts placed. Now this photo has been geo-rectified, it's all snapped into the proper locations here, so it is uh, geographically aligned. But we also have the connect data that we can also apply in there. So you can see here the connect data and it's color coded by elevation with green being at the lowest elevation up to white at the highest elevation. We can also add that in in a three dimensional aspect. So here we can see there's all of our artifact data in three dimensions and we have all the quads here listed as well. So when we find artifacts that come over here to the recordation station where they get entered into the catalog and a receipt like tag is generated and this tag you can see this label has on it a what's called a QR code and a QR code is basically just a code that a uh, something like a smartphone can look at this and it knows exactly to go to a certain record related to this artifact. And we set this system up as part of Cooper's Ferry uh, research because it allows us to, uh, as researchers, to go in later, scan this thing. It brings us into a larger computer file that 
can include things like the picture, it can include a video commentary from me about the thing, it can include a three-dimensional model uh, that I can look at, or even download and send to a 3D printer. Basically, it's just sort of like an address to the database that contains all the information that we want to hold about this particular artifact from the site. So in the future, someone who's interested in looking at this collection can just simply scan this and tap into a rich array of information about the artifact. So uh, we have a bunch of laptops sitting out at the dig site um, and they're connected over an intranet using a little uh, wireless access point or a, a WAP uh, back to the Archie server. So Archie is just a web page. Um, it's a little web application um, that we can use with any device, so a laptop, a tablet, even your phone could use uh, Archie since it's just like browsing any other web page. Um, the reason we use Archie is because before we had stacks upon stacks of paper. Um, we would record it on paper at, on site, go back to the lab, and then have to enter that into a spreadsheet program like Excel. Um, now with Archie, what we do is we actually enter it direct electronically on site, and we can use that information to adjust the methods that are being used for excavation, as well as potentially reframe where we're digging or even expose new questions about the site itself. Here right now, what I've got up is some of the code for Archie. Um, I'm adding some uh, fields to the database, and then I have my test install of Archie itself, where I do all my development. So we use a Next Engine 3D scanner, which is a commercially available, one of the cheaper uh, scanners to use, but it's still quite powerful. And um, we use this to capture all the data about the artifacts, their form, their shape, and allows us to turn the three-dimensional form into a computer language that can also be printed. So here's a tip of a biface that one of the students, Jenny, uh, found while excavating. And this scan can not only be used just for a visual uh, effect, but you can also look at the millions of data points that go along with the artifact, and that itself can be a unit of analysis. This technology is very useful to us because we can take very accurate measurements of artifacts and take the millions of data points that we wouldn't otherwise be able to collect from an artifact and use them as a very intensive unit of analysis. So once we have the scan completed, we of course can do the morphological analysis, but we can also send the three-dimensional data file of the millions of data points. Um, we can send it off to a three-dimensional printer and it can render the object in a physical form. Here we have the point completely printed. We have followed this point's life history from discovery all the way to being a teaching tool.